Hey folks, I uh, just want to do a quick video on a repair I did on my Craftsman lawn tractor last year when I was riding it. Uh, it quit going forward or I couldn't get it to go reverse and when there, and it's I got a hydrostatic trans uh, axle in it and I move it forward backwards and all I would hear was this high uh, whining sound, uh, almost like uh, something was stripped. And so I knew I had probably a problem with my transaxle. Uh, in doing some research, I found out that the actual transaxle is a hydro gear transaxle. Up under the back of the transaxle, it has two numbers on it. The one that starts with the 1-5, that's actually the Sears number. The other one is more of the hydro gear number. So in looking that up on HydroGear's website, trying to find a service manual, I couldn't find one for a transaxle that started with 218. So I ended up having to call them, and they said the uh, manual for my transaxle was this one. Notice how it actually says that it's for a 210 dash number. Uh, basically, uh, HydroGear told me that they have multiple variations of this transaxle and so anything that's 2 1 anything dash whatever that is basically the same uh, transaxle so this is actually the service manual you want and it's uh, very good so so you indeed will want that so basically i downloaded that printed it out uh, I took the transaxle out. I won't go into that. Um, if you're mechanically inclined, you can figure that out. Basically, remove the belt. Then I re removed the little assembly that has the, a fan on it, which is exterior on my model. Uh, some of the models, like this actual picture shows you, some of their models actually have a shaft up here that has a, that's where the fan would go. Mine has a, a, my, my a Craftsman mower did not, does not have that on the tr uh, transaxle. So uh, and actually, this is a good picture to show you. Once you get the uh, transaxle out, it looks like one assembly. Uh, indeed, it's not. This right here is the pump. And this right here is the actual gearbox for the transaxle. And notice there's two um, hydraulic uh, uh, tubes there that circulates the oil through the gearbox and the uh, the actual pump. There's about, if I recall correctly, about four long bolts that you have to take loose and then you can pull this away. You don't have to take off the, the hoses and they're kind of have those special crimps on it. So I don't, if, unless for some reason you need to replace those hoses, I wouldn't recommend messing with those. Just get those out of the way. Once you get those out of the way, you will be able to see the, something that looks like this. This is where the pump uh, connects into the gearbox. The whole part looks like this. So your your pump connects here. These are two bearings that, that the, the whole assembly rides on. This gear here, which you can see is in very good shape, uh, though I've had this uh, mower since it was basically new for, gosh, over 15 years or more. I've had it forever. Uh, and then right here is the uh, where the brake disc goes. So this one little assembly, which you think is just more for the brake, actually is the the whole um, you know basic drive mechanism for this transaxle. The the pump from this gear is what what gets the power to your tires. And so when you have it apart where you got the pump weight where you can see this, what you want to do is grab this with a pair of needle nose pliers because this is actually in a recessed part on the transaxle. And, and if you can pull this off, that's your problem because uh, when this is new, this part is pressed on here. So this is all one piece. Um, when I first took it apart, I took my needle nose pliers and tried to move it, and I was like, well, gosh, it, it's, you know, there's, it's not spinning there. But what the deal is, is that, uh, see, once it breaks loose, it could run, who knows how long it ran that way with it actually broke loose before the splines actually wear down to where they slip. See this? 
that's your problem. So if you happen to push down, you can get to where there's actually still some good spline left and you'll get a false indication that, oh, this thing's not my problem. But in reality, if you can even pull, if, you, if it's loose, that indeed, that's wrong to start with, that indeed you'll probably find that indeed it's stripped out. And the problem is, all of this right here is in the transaxle. And so you actually have to split the, the uh, gear case apart. I used a, a sharp um, scraper so that I could tap around without gouging in to the case because it's aluminum. Once I got it apart, once I got it actually split apart, it, it was it, it only split apart a little bit, but it didn't seem to want to come apart. I, I thought there was something holding it, um, but it, there wasn't. There is just a lot of suction, and of course you want to take your, drain your oil out before you split it apart. There's a lot of suction of the oil on the end in the places where the gears mesh into the two halves it's an amazing amount of suction there so if you slowly work around it with a, a very large screwdriver a flat so you don't gouge anything you know finally that suction will give way and you can split it apart and then at that point this easy you can easily get to this and take it out and if you get a replacement part which is going to be 130 between 100 30 and 150 dollars a, a little bit you can get a little bit cheaper on ebay i got it from a guy locally who um, was very close to the price so i just went ahead and got it locally um you'll need this part when i took mine apart this this little oil seal um goes around there this actually goes into the this actually is mounted in the transaxle so when you're putting it back together you have to work it on there like that Mine was cocked a little bit, and I was thinking, well, when I pulled this apart, I pulled it straight, so why was it cocked? So I decided to go ahead and replace it, and I'm glad I did, because when I went to replace it, it didn't only come with a replacement seal, it came with this retainer clip. So I think, trans, uh, I think that Hydro Gear had some issues with that seal uh, backing out of its seating place and so uh, when you replace it you'll want to tap it in place and then tap this uh, seal retainer in place also so it's worth going ahead and replacing that even if you don't think your seal is, is actually bad so in so those are the two main tips that I want to give you um, an additional tip uh, that I will a couple additional uh, tips that I'll give you is Hydro Gear, they make an RTV adhesive to uh, put back on the two halves. Now, you want to clean your two halves really good where everything is smooth. You don't want to scrape and gouge. Uh, so you want to use some something like a brake cleaner and uh, maybe a plastic scraper. Or if you use something metal, make sure you don't gouge that you want to kind of just scrape across it this way. But it would be a lot safer to use plastic and some cleaner. Uh, to get those surfaces uh, nice and clean and smooth. And I used the Permatex Black Adhesive. It's um, very good, uh, exceedingly more inexpensive than the Hydro Gear Adhesive. And notice this set, I used the black because it says maximum oil resistance. So um, I really like their their high temperature RTV, which is an orange color, but for this application, I felt like this would do a, a better job. So after I got everything together and torqued all the bolts per what's in the service manual, I let it sit there for, it was a minimum of two days to make sure that this was cured. Even if I had used their adhesive, I would have let it sit for quite a bit of time to make sure it was was uh, good and cured and then I went ahead and put the oil in it this is a picture of what the side of it looks like the transaxle uh, and I would also recommend taking some pictures around it before you even take anything apart so that if you have any questions about how something goes back together you'll have pictures to go by that that's you know pictures with a, a thousand words and also be very careful when you're taking the gears out of the uh, the transaxle some of those gears do have uh, they have the washers on 
either side of them and so you want to be very careful to not let any of those slide off and fall be very very cognizant of that but whenever you take it off see here's the oil fill spout well filling that once it's back in the lawnmower uh, you know getting it where the oil would run in there would be kind of painful So what I did is once I got it together I just kind of tilted the transaxle and filled it with oil and then put it back in the in the mower But once you get it back in the mower be sure to Unloosen this bolt because unloosening and putting the bolt back in is a whole lot easier than actually filling oil in it um, loosen up the, the uh, bolt because if you fill it with it out, particularly if you tilted it like I did, you will have put too much oil in there. So you want to take that uh, that fill hole loose so that the oil can run out to where it's level with the bottom of that hole because that is your level. And then put it back together and you're done. The, the last tip that I will uh, give you is, I don't, I don't know if I showed you these I, I, let me show them again just in case I didn't this is the uh, bag that the actual seal came in and this is the bag that the actual brake uh, shaft assembly came in the only other thing I will say as a tip is this seal has a spring on the back that keeps it on the shaft this shaft, uh, this uh, c um, spring on the new one, um, as you're trying to get it on, wants to actually uh, come off. So what I did was, once I got the, the shaft in place, I put this in that half of the assembly first, and then put it together that way to make sure that that, that, that spring wouldn't, would be positioned right. So that's my last tip for you. Once you get it back together and put it back together, that should resolve your issue. Thank you.